So uh, as co-founder of Climbing Poetry, Naima and I created this multimedia theater production called Hurricane Season, The Hidden Messages in Water. And the piece looked at the intersections of state violence, displacement, and environmental injustice as the pillars that uphold colonization and this continued globalization that is swallowing this miracle that we were given. And I'm going to share with you a reimagined excerpt from this two-hour production that was entirely in rhyme <laughs> and that we traveled 51 cities, 11,000 miles on a bus that we converted to run and recycle vegetable oil. And this was back in 2008, 2009. And even though that was 15 years ago, roughly, um, I really feel like the words speak to today's sharing, which, uh, well, I'll leave it there. When the waters calmed, like Noah's Ark, there was no dove, no olive branch, just helicopters and cameras and riot cops told to fire shots. This is occupied territory, like Palestine, Baghdad, or Watts. Toxic water guns were loaded long before our dreams were afterthoughts. In a man-made nightmare, in nightmares, they tried to call acts of God. And what does it say about a nation who spends half its yearly bread on war and militia? What are they trying to defend? What does it say about a government who locks up a segment of its populace and uses the profit to pay his debts? Who are we protecting? What are we afraid of? How did we forget? There's an unnatural disaster causing unnatural deaths. If there's enough food to feed the world, why is half the world still underfed? If we can wage war overnight, why can't we know peace lifetimes before our deaths? My people, there is no time to philosophize peace. When we act like we're living under siege, locked up in gated communities, held up in front of TVs, every day that goes by, we grow terrified of the fear we've invoked through empire missiles in prime time. The climate of our mind is in crisis. Our hearts are off at war. Our breaths polluted. Our bloodstreams toxic. Our souls in prison behind locked doors. It's no wonder why we suffer with all we can afford and live beneath machines and guns just so we feel secure. We are surrounded by multiplying fences, chain link, white picket, barbed wire, electric, a people made separate by fear and income gaps, prison walls, highways, razor wires, and train tracks. There's a gate being built around a community who colonized a hilltop that was once a plantation, once a ghetto, once a nation, before First Nations were fenced off in reservations. There's a fortress being built around our imagination. They've built up surveillance around our memory's landscape because they're scared we'll escape if we remember our daydreams are ancient. They got Minutemen and Border Patrol ready to shoot down migrating thoughts that might lead towards liberation or illegal hallucination of a world that exists beyond the borders that they arm. But if we are the truth we speak, if we are the truth we seek, let us speak what we know to be. Because history is written by the victors and news is always broadcast by the captors. Our desires are manufactured and our self image is backlit by the glow of the TV and newspaper captions. Our inner children have been kidnapped and are being held captive in classrooms that teach us that life's a transaction. They say you can purchase democracy. And we get equal access to living in a building whose foundation is cracking because the steeple. The steeple was built in the basement and the slave quarters were fractions of a whole picture of an equation whose math was done backwards and passed down through teachings that couldn't preach what they practice. So they use double speak to keep us distracted with addiction, strip malls, pop stars and fashions and new gadgets that make our eyes avoid contact in a world where truth is hidden, silence is complacency. In a world where fear is spoken, 
error follows. So I spit verses to reverse the lies I refuse to swallow. Form our words in the shape of our revelation for tomorrow, this tomorrow has no name, but we are calling her for it. This tomorrow is not the same as yesterday, but she is as ancient as the world. This wish is leaving my lips like a wide-eyed traveler without a passport, but equipped with dreams and a whole fellowship of journeyers who found an escape plan and are willing to run with it as if it were the drinking gourd spelling our names up in the sky. We are ready for light. We are ready to live, ready to hold each other against the rim of extinction. Because they who build concrete against the corners of our hearts need to feel our resistance like a million tender blades of grass cracking sidewalks apart, reminding your runaway child there is no place that love cannot find you. There is no place that love cannot find you. There is no place that love cannot find you. And if the captors, slave masters, and war benefactors knew a love like ours, they would go thirsty with their lives and come to us for last magic in their memory. And we will feed them when they come to us on their knees, way down from weaponry, begging forgiveness and water. We will share our medicine until they weep at the resemblance of our faces. They will remember our names and their numbers will crumble to dust bankrupt. Their blood money will be as worthless as their guns. And with time, our never endings will rewrite new beginnings that start with, imagine how free we can get if. Fill in that space. Love is the opposite of fear. Be love, don't be afraid. We are only tricked into believing that our believing isn't enough and that there isn't enough to go around. But our trust gave me the courage to challenge their truth as a bluff. Their fiction is empty. The hunger is growing like stomachs swollen and rumbling. This moment is a whisper that hears you coming. So ask, the answer is yes, no matter the question. So let it be peace that echoes in our breath, exhales your soul intention, let your truth spread like wind and water rippling out in all directions. We are the unfolding, the universe is our reflection.